Hi everyone, welcome to this video where we discuss about what exactly is Web API. As you know, Web API is known as the digital glue for the World Wide Web. So in this video, we are going to uh, learn about what exactly is Web API and why is it so important. So there are four items in the agenda that we'll go through. So firstly, before we talk about what is Web API, so what is API. Then, what is Web API and why must we use Web API? And I'll show you some practical examples using coding on uh, why are we using Web API. Alright, so what is API? API is the short form for Application Programmable Interface. So let's take this log API as an example, something that you are familiar with when you've done Android programming. So this log interface consists of several methods over here whereby the Android developer can call right, and use them to achieve logging to the console functionality. So therefore, API is basically a set of methods whereby uh, the developer can use to gain access to the functionalities that is provided by the API developer. Alright, so now that we have somewhat an idea of what is API, so let's move on to the second question. What then is Web API? So here we can see the main difference. Of course, one is Web API and one is just API. So if we go back to the earlier example here, the lock API, so when we install Android Studio, we have access to all the available API. For example, Log API, the Array Map API, the Array Set API. So all these API are avail available to us locally. So therefore, Web API must be that the API now is residing in the web server. A very good example that we can learn why it's Web API is we can go to this particular website, Programmable Web. So over here, uh, API Web API developer they can share uh, the Web API that, that they have developed. So for example, we go to let's say coronavirus. Okay, view all. Okay, so somebody has created this Web API known as. Canada Open COVID API. So let's click on it. Okay, so let's click on this one. Okay, let's click on this particular URL here. Okay, and then we get back some values. So basically, Web API is like calling the methods, okay, and getting back some result so over here we can see that when we when we run this endpoint here we are getting back some results so this is basically what is web api we use the browser to access a url or more correctly known as endpoint and we get back some results so to summarize API and Web API, for API, for example the log API that we see in Android Studio, the developer must first install Android Studio, then the de developer will have access to the log API. On the other hand, if you do not want the user to have the need to install your program in order to use your API then you must develop your API as web API so that through the various endpoint the user can use the endpoint then to access your web API so that they will get back some kinds of results moving on to the third item why must we use web API so for 
for this explanation, I need you to have some patience as I will be drawing some diagram and explaining to you why there is a need now to use Web API. Okay, so we will always have the client side and the server side. So for the server side, uh, we will have a web server. So examples of web server uh, is Node.js, the Internet Information Services by Microsoft, Apache, Tomcat. So these are the different uh, web server programs that one can install to functions as a web server. Then you also have some server-side technologies, server-side such as server-side JavaScript, PHP, Python, Java, etc. On the server side, you also have database solutions such as MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, or even MongoDB. Right? So all, all these technologies reside on the server side. So what about the client side? So for the client side, basically uh, we have the browser. Right? We're talking about web. So we have the desktop web browser and the laptop web browser. So before year 2000, this is basically the landscape of the, the web, okay, the state of the web. So uh, basically the browser will make requests to the web server, right? And then the server side scripting okay, will be activated, they will process. They will query database, they will get back data, and then what they will do is they will format the result as HTML content. So the HTML content which consists of HTML, CSS, JavaScript will then be sent back to the browser and it is the browser job to render the HTML, CSS and the JavaScript. However, from the year 2000 onwards, the web landscape becomes more complicated. Because now, we are not just talking about uh, the browser on the desktop or on the laptop. We have many more other clients. For example, we have the desktop client. So we have the Windows 7 native desktop app. We have Mac desktop apps. We have Linux desktop apps. We have Chrome desktop apps. And then we also have mobile apps, native mobile apps. So we have iOS native mobile apps, we have Android native mobile apps and also Windows mobile apps. And to add even more confusion to the web landscape, we have IoT apps, right? So developer can write apps running on Arduino, on Raspberry Pi, or even a microcontroller such as an ESP32, right? So we still have the same server side, but the client side has many more uh, different kind of applications, not just the browser application, but we have native applications running on mobile, running on desktop, and running on IoT. And therefore, the traditional way of returning the data as HTML CSS and JavaScript can no longer serve the larger purpose because it will be extremely difficult for the mobile apps to understand HTML content, CSS and JavaScript. It will also be very challenging for desktop developer to, to understand HTML content in their desktop apps and also for the IoT app developer. So therefore now we know that the traditional way of developing the server side, a web traditional app will no longer serve the bigger purpose because now we are talking about a wide array of clients. Right? So now HTML contents is not going to work. So the solution is to develop your web application as a web API and the results that is going to send back 
to the client must be universal and it will be JSON content. So if you take a look of a very simple JSON content example, so it's something like this ID colon followed by the value, the key which is title colon followed by the value and director colon followed by the value. So if we go back to the earlier on the web API, so you can see that it is returning back when we consume the web API endpoint, it is returning back JSON value. Active cases, okay, 30,000. 30, Active cases change, 397. So therefore, now, it is up to the various platform developer to decipher the content. So if the developer is an Android developer, there are already uh, Android API or Android classes that one can easily use to decipher JSON content that return from the web API. The same goes for if you are a web developer, there are plenty of JavaScript library that one can use to decipher the JSON content that return back from the JSON return back from the web API and let's say for a Mac OS developer same thing there are plenty of Swift classes that the developer can use to de decipher the JSON content so therefore now to the web API the responsibility is the same it just need to return back JSON content whenever anyone regardless of which client trigger the endpoint you just need to return the JSON content and it is the responsibility of the the various platform developer to to use the appropriate programming language to decipher the JSON content that returns back from the web API and then to present uh, the content in meaningful presentation to the end user. Okay, so uh, finally, I'm going to show you some pra practical examples. Alright, so this is the movie review web app that you are going to develop uh, throughout this entire module. So I've modified this web app such that it is able to function as a dual purpose so if one access the 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 following url slash traditional then basically what happened is this web app is going to function in the traditional way it is going to of course it is using server side js it's going to uh, get the data from my sql and it is going to format the data together with HTML, CSS and JavaScript and return back to the client. All right. However, if another endpoint is being triggered, for example, slash movie, then this web app is going to function as a web API. Same thing, the server side will kick into action and get the data from the MySQL database but it is not going to mix the data with HTML or CSS it is going to format the data as JSON and return back to the client so let me show you now right so if I am accessing the web app using this URL traditional so what I'm getting back is the HTML content. On the other hand, if I am get if I am triggering via the uh, web API endpoint, then I'm getting back JSON data. So here you can see the JSON data. All right. So now, if I were to use Postman, right? So the postman, right? 
so you can see I'm getting back HTML content CSS and a lot of JavaScript on the other hand if I am uh, accessing the web API endpoints then I'm just getting back pure JSON data so you can see here the pure JSON data so back to the issue if the client is a browser then if I return back in HTML content it is no problem for the browser because the browser will understand HTML content it is the job of the browser to render HTML content however if I am a native mobile app developer for example I am an Android mobile app developer right so this is an Android app then if I were to access traditional I'm going to have a very big problem because the data that is returning back from the web application will be all this HTML which is going to be very difficult for the Android app developer to decipher on the other hand if now the web app is developed as a web API so here I'm accessing the endpoint of the web API and I can use a library such as JSON which is very good at deciphering JSON data so now if I were to run this Android native app so you can see that the same set of data the JSON I can use Java with the right uh, library I can decipher the JSON data that's returning back from the web API therefore in conclusion if we want to just keep a single version of a web application and not to have so many different versions which is very difficult to to develop as well as to maintain then the web application must be developed as a web API so that it can it can fulfill all the requests from the different client so long as the different web API endpoint is being triggered it is basically the job of the web API server to return back JSON content to the different client and it is the responsibility of the different client then to decipher and present the JSON content in a very meaningful manner to the end user so thank you for watching this video tutorial